Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside, bringing you another prospect list where we get five additional books that you can only catch on the YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss our show. Starting out at number 15, we have Fantastic Four, number 275. She-Hulk books are on fire right now. Uh, certain controversial or revealing covers are selling for large sums. The issue features the first appearance of TJ Vance, publisher of Adult Magazine, The Naked Truth. He acquires pics of her sunbathing, which he publishes without her permission. Considering the bikini centerfold and the content, this might be one of the She-Hulk fans will want if, if they only knew about it. And this is, also has the first appearance of She-Hulk in white. At number 14, we have X-Men number 166, the double size issue. Classic story by Chris Claremont. Um, I believe it's Paul Smith did the cover, but this is uh, in the guts. You have your uh, first appearance of Lockheed, which in story is unnamed until issue. I believe it's 168. And also, you know, for all the uh, the uh, death key issue hunters, the uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. But uh, the death of Broad Queen is also... Um, you know, happening in this book. Um, last I checked, there was a, a bump this book got. Um, I'd say around this time last year, I hit a few top 10 lists, but it has simmered to something that is affordable. At number 13, we have Marvel Milestones, Fantastic Four, number five, The New Stand. All right. So I'm really excited that this book made the list. Uh, anybody who's ever uh, collected these books knows how difficult they are to keep uh, in high grade. Uh, they really get the, the the daylights kicked out of them uh, very, very easily. Uh, so this is the first appearance of Dr. Doom. From everything I've been able to find, this is the first time it's been reprinted on a standalone basis. It has been reprinted in other collections and other uh, annuals, I believe, but uh, this issue reprinted as it's as, as a standalone book. This is the first time that it ever happened. Um, you know, there's there's a newsstand variant of this book that is frankly impossible in high grade, uh, but definitely worth grabbing if you see it. We're we're seeing the the fervor for Kang right now, um, which is completely warranted, right? Um, completely warranted based on what we saw in Loki. Um, that said, um, I, I believe, and as many believe, that Doctor Doom is the bigger plan. Um, for Marvel, for sort of the next major big, 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 big bad, and um, and you know when that hits, the chase for his books are going to be out of control. Most collectors can't get anywhere near Fantastic Four number five. This may be your next best option, and the buy-in for this right now is relatively cheap in the ten to twenty dollar range, which for me makes it um, a really smart long-term spec play. At number twelve, we have Sandman number nineteen. The error or non-error version. Obviously, we, we know we have the Sandman series coming up. It's not, I, I wouldn't say Sandman books are on fire. You've seen the first appearance of Death and Dream uh, go up in this last year. I think there's some there's some there's some nervousness uh, among fans, but uh, we'll we'll see what we get. Uh, I nominated this book. If you aren't familiar, number 19 is actually the, the issue titled Midsummer Night's Dream. And the whole issue is, it's basically replaying the, the Shakespeare play, The Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, within it. When it came out, it, it won a World Fantasy Award, which had a different name at the time, uh, which was a big deal. It was a literature award, and that hadn't really happened. there. There's two, The Watchmen won a literary award in the early mid 80s, and then this one did. And the people who ran the award, uh, the World Fantasy Award, were so pissed off about it that they actually changed the rules after the fact so that no comic book could win again. Uh, as we know now, comics have moved into literature and are, uh, are a really valuable part of that area. So. Uh, I think it's an important book because of that, but also we are going to see this uh, probably more than in season two. We're going to see this episode uh, show up in the show. There is an error variant of this 
Uh, it seems that both the regular and the error are about the same availability. Uh, there really isn't good data on that. Uh, a lot more of the error have been submitted to CGC, which is common. Uh, there was a spawn book a few years ago that uh, there were 50-50, but everybody sent in the error. Uh, but I, I think either one, they have about the same value, but uh, – I think this is this is an important book, especially for Sandman collectors. And there's about to be a lot more Sandman collectors out there. So, at number eleven, we have hardware number one. Minority superheroes have been super hot the last couple years, and here's a good opportunity to buy one um, for quite cheap. This is about five or six bucks in the poly bag or without. This is the first appearance of hardware, and with the new hardware series coming out. Uh, I think it's coming out pretty soon. This is a good opportunity uh, to follow Static for live action. Um, I think that this character still resonates with a lot of people almost 30 years later. And here we have a, a blue-collar worker. Uh, he becomes a superhero and goes, goes against the corrupt and rich. So this can definitely be formatted to today's times. There's a lot of great spec potential with this character. I really, really like. I really, really like hardware. I, I, I read this as a kid, so um, this, this, this series actually lasted longer than Static during that milestone run. So uh, this is definitely a good one if you want to buy something cheap and with long legs. And our top ten at number ten, we have Sarge Steel number three. All right. So this book was submitted by our main man, Mercenot. Definitely check out his channel if you're not watching it. So this is the first appearance of the Smiling Skull. Um, if you've ever watched his videos, you know that Carter absolutely loves this book. His take on it right now uh, is tied to what's going on um, in the Suicide Squad. Uh, Peacemaker uh, is getting his own uh, spinoff TV show. And uh, Carter believes that James Gunn is just crazy enough to maybe introduce this character into that show. Peacemaker is going to need uh, some bad guys, and uh, and Gunn is is definitely the sort of producer uh, or director who could um, who could make a character like this work. Uh, this is not um, an easy book to find, um, but uh, one with a lot of significance and, and one that could have uh, have some upside uh, in the not too distant future. That's such a cool image. It's like a cross between the Red Skull and the Batman who laughs. <laughs> it absolutely is. At number nine, we have Astonishing Ant-Man, number 10, the Death of X variant. It, this is such a, a, a stunning cover. I, I, I don't know what else to say, but I'm going to own this book in a 9-8, damn it. <laughs> it, it, it. It's just amazing. This book was in 2016, and uh, we just reviewed the list about 10 minutes ago and and I, I didn't remember it and that's a great thing about this show is that we get to review uh older books and and books that may have flew under the radar and this definitely has uh for me has flown under the radar i gotta have this book it's it's uh it's strictly a cover buy but man this is something i i wouldn't mind putting on the wall i mean this is beautiful yeah. harder artist at the moment than, uh, than Jenny Frizen, and this is uh, uh, this is no exception. Um, really quite striking. At number eight, we have Century number one, the one in 50, the J. Lee variant. Hey, Aaron, thanks. Um, so you got the one in 50. Um, I, I believe it's an Artie Rosen um, homage or cover art, and then the San Diego Comic-Con is J. Lee. Um cover art even though the cgc label for the one in 50 does say jay lee at least the last time i checked but so so so, so, so a little bit of a history there um it is jay lee the one in 50 is jay lee um, okay good to keep the uh to keep the mystery going right because the whole history of this character was he was kind of forgotten um or he, he signed an Artie rosen to kind of keep everybody guessing um but it was actually drawn by by, by jay lee um, it was it was part of sort of the um, the hook there, trying to play on the um, on, on the consumer around this book. Appreciate that. I didn't even know that. That's a little bit of education. I mean, at least both of them. I mean, me and 
long short were just talking about how they were almost like modern grails um i just saw two copies of the one in 50 sell for two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars i can't i i'm sorry it was two for a hundred dollars so yeah i mean it's 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 in a big time dip i mean at one point i remember this this book was like unaffordable but the reason why i like the century and don't get me wrong i know that he died in in king in black and you know nope pretty much ripped him in half um and it also didn't help that the thunderbolts uh, found his corpse a uh, few arcs later but um you know when we were watching loki um episodes i believe four through six you know they were uh, rep they were referencing um the end of time which they were using the term the void you know rather than you know the century which is the first appearance in this book is also has a dark entity to himself which is the void i thought that was an interesting callback to a possible um century um casting in the future the void was one of the most important parts of that series on the second half. But on the other hand, you know, it, it was a, it was more of a, of a Eliath that they were talking about, which was the cloud um, uh, villain that was basically eating up everybody. He was eating up, or he ate up uh, classic Loki and lady Loki went in and enchanted uh, the, the cloud or what have you. But even though they're two different, I still think that it, it, it was a callback to the to the century and I, you know this book is the lowest it's been in years i think it's super important for people to you know check the uh the the before and after prices and if you see this book for what i've been seeing it lately it might be a good time to jump on this book yeah i mean it, it's a massive book and i think what marvel did with the story you know treating it as a character that was lost in time uh, lost in history had been around since the golden age is beyond brilliant and um i love this book M my very favorite cover is the uh is the one in 50 uh because it's a throwback to that style of art and um this is a super important book and i think a character marvel can do something with even on a standalone basis um in a tv show uh or a movie um, at number seven, we have Avengers number four, the 2016 version. There's not really a lot to be said. This is the origin of Kang and the origin of his mask. Um, it's just a beautiful Alex Ross cover. Um, uh, there's not much to be said other than that. Th this is a key, key book right now. I would say if, you, if you're going to spec on something origin stories i mean they're huge for marvel it gives you uh some insight as, as far as his character also you have the first appearance of the king's time syndicate which goes unnamed until issue number six which is basically uh an important part of the story arc i won't spoil it but i think it's a great pick joe i i when i saw you drop that in there i was like heck yeah this guy's sharp at number six we have Wizard Number One, the Collector's Edition from 1991. So, Overstreet Price Guide continues to rise in price. Here we have Wizard Number One, right? And not only is it just Wizard Number One, but it's the Todd McFarlane Spider Man co cover as well, too. That's um, been rising in price lately. Uh, Wizard was. Um, before we had the internet, right? Or before we had uh, social media personalities like us talking about speculation, there was Wizard. And everyone went to Wizard for their hot list, checking their prices, just like a Beckett looking for um, how, much their, how much their comics or collection have, has been going up. There was a lot of relevant information in there. And this is just pure awesomeness um, by Samson on this pick and yeah i mean how can you go wrong with a, a wizard wearing a spider-man cover you know with the hat and and magic is canon now right with the mcu so i definitely <laughs> like this book yeah i think listen from all of us of this generation right everybody on the show right wizard was um was our bible month in month out right at least 
I'm not going to speak for you guys, but it certainly was for me and the people that I collected with. Um, and uh, and this holds a special place in my heart. I, I was talking with the guys before the show. I still have this copy, my my original copy uh, that I had when I was you know just a kid uh, in my collection. And uh, yeah, I think it's a super awesome awesome book to have and, and, and a lot of historical significance. Yeah, and Mel brought back the casting call from Wizard on his drunken chat now, so the, the beat goes on. Shout, shout out to Mel. And shout out to Samson. Long live the journey. At number five, we have Fantasy Masterpieces, number 11. Uh, this is Topher's pick. Thank you, Topher. Uh, a huge fountain of knowledge. This is, uh, this is a book we need to be talking about because of the movie coming up with Black Knight. Uh, this is the uh, this is the first reprint of the 1955 Black Knight. Uh, number one, it's it's an he he put it up here because it is an undervalued Black Knight book, uh, and I think that's a really smart angle to take. There are a lot of really undervalued Black Knight books, considering he's imminent in a movie coming up. We've seen him in the trailers. It's a very charismatic actor, uh, Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones. That was an ensemble movie itself, but he stole the scenes in that movie. Uh, aside from his first appearance, there hasn't been a lot of books that have been talked about. I think there are smart speculators who are digging in and finding these other Black Knight books, whether they're modern uh, or, or back in the, the silver or bronze age. So. I think this is a great idea, great pick, and I think we need to talk more about Black Knight. For number four, we have the Unstoppable Wasp number one, the one in 25. This is a really wonderful book. Um, it is uh, Nadia Van Dyne's version of the Wasp, uh, first solo title. This cover is done by the wonderful Elizabeth Torque. Um, she's done um, a handful of as you like to term here, modern bangers. I think this one is right up there with uh, with some of her best work. So this is a one in 25. I will say that, you know, this book didn't have, you know, super high orders. Um, based on what I was able to pull, we're looking at something around 35,000. So, you know, one in 25, which is about 4%, you know, on that number, you know, leaves just a handful of these out there. This is a book I've not seen a lot of people talking about, but, but a book that could be very important if we see this character in Ant-Man 3. And there's reason to believe that we might. Um, they've recently put out a casting call for a for an actress that, that definitely fits the description of Nadia. Um, so we will see what happens. Regardless if she shows up or not, I think this book has legs long term and, uh, and one that I think you should be out there grabbing. Uh, it probably sells for the four, in the forty to fifty dollar range right now, which in the modern market isn't crazy based on some of the other prices that we're seeing. At number three, we have Doctor Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme. Number three. Yeah, I believe this was a pick from Josh, but I know we've we've chatted about this book. This is the third issue in in this series, but this is the first the origin issue for Kushala right there on the cover. She does show up on the one in 25, kind of in the background of number one. This is definitely her first feature cover. I would consider this for all intents and purposes, uh, her first major cover. Uh, she's gone through a couple name changes in the beginning. She was known as Demon Rider, uh, then Kushala in this one shot that she's got. Now it's, it's switching to Spirit Rider, but regardless, this is a very important character for Marvel going forward. It looks to to myself and Josh and other people like this might be the next gen character in the horror realm. It kind of merges the worlds of magic and Doctor Strange with the spirits of vengeance, which is just awesome. She's a great design. Uh, her origin, you should read this as well as buy it and you know put it away. Uh, her origin is is linked in with American history and is is a very interesting character. Uh, there are some big plans for this character coming up, uh, and which is evident by how many covers she's been featured on. I think she's been featured on more covers than comics that she she's appeared in. She's just a very popular character. So 
smart pick going with the origin everybody's chasing number one so go grab number three yeah i definitely agree with you tony it was a good pick by josh and i do agree with you it, definitely her first full cover appearance i don't know if that's a term um, nowadays in the market but i've been hurt i've heard it quite a few times and like tony was saying um this i believe it's either this wednesday or next wednesday um spirit of vengeance spirit rider number one rumor has it she becomes the sorcerer supreme um i it's it's not guaranteed i don't i can't give you a spoiler because i really don't know but that's the spec i know that marvel just put out a press release that they are killing off dr strange matter of fact dr strange is so important you know we not only see him on tv but they're actually having an entire uh story uh arc you know uh one through i believe six of uh, the death of Doctor Strange, which comes out um, in August. Now, on the other hand, you still have uh, Strange Academy, which, you know, he is the Sorcerer Supreme along with Doctor Voodoo. So it does make those Doctor Voodoo key books, New Avengers 53, more enticing long term. But I thought, it, I thought Tony was right. I thought it was interesting that they went ahead and used Kushala as and gave her her own uh, first solo title, first, um, uh, you know, comic book run rather than somebody like Alejandro Jones or somewhere in, in that area. So, yeah, I believe this is a, a this is a long term character for Marvel Comics and possibly for the MCU. At number two, we have Green Lantern number 48. OK, another shout out to the journey. Long live the journey. Um, Samson. Uh, he picked Green Lantern 48, the first appearance of Kyle Rayner. We know that the Green Lantern cor Corps are coming on HBO Max. Um, Samson was saying that uh, if Guy Gardner fails, right, Kyle Rayner would be a good replacement for the uh, lead role. And possibly even so that uh, Kyle Rayner could show up in another project or in the same series. I'd like to make a note that a couple years ago in Chicago, I saw a big Green Lantern movement on the con season on the show floor. And I feel that Green Lantern, the Green Lantern project could be major. It may not be as big as Venom, but I think Green Lantern spec uh, has is really good. Uh, we got a lot of vintage collectors collecting um Jump, putting in money into key books for the Green Lantern universe. You have modern collectors uh, still buying new books, right, for Green Lantern. So uh, definitely great pick by Samson. Yeah, maybe maybe we get Kyle Rayner. There was a rumor that Tom Cruise wanted to be him uh, a couple years ago. So yeah, definitely a, a good pick for twenty to twenty five bucks. And for our number one book, we have. All new, all different Avengers number nine, the one in 50, the Alex Ross design. Let me first start out by saying that Mr. Longshort is the one that got me onto this book a long time ago. I was aware of it. I just didn't know the significance of it, but most of the market doesn't know as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, drop a little knowledge here in the sense that, you know, this is your first cover appearance and then second full appearance of the wasps or the second wasp uh, nadia pym now you know this uh, design is not for everybody i know designs aren't for everybody but this is actually an alex ross design and the reason why i like this is is not only because you see her on the cover for the first time but a it's a one in 50 on a book that's reasonably um ordered also you know it doesn't really look like alex ross art to me he really took a different approach to this so that's one of the reasons why i like it there's not many copies on on the census i love the character the, the next gen character future wise it's not confirmed but basically on the research that i've come up with uh hope van dyne basically uh of ant-man and and the avengers on the mcu is a loosely based character of this character which is uh nadia and basically what i i'm reading is is that nadia is a slavic term in english it means hope 
And, um, you know, I went a little further. I went into uh, the actor that plays Hope Van Dyne on in the MCU, uh, Evangeline Lilly. And she's got this on um, her Wikipedia. I don't always believe Wikipedia. Like I just seemed it's it seemed like it was a legit story. But more about the comic book character, I thought it was interesting with her origin. She was actually brought up in the Red Room. Um, those who aren't familiar with the Red Room um, might be familiar with Black Widow, which is the same um, area where the Black Widow assassins were trained, and that's where she her origin story kind of starts. She was trained to be an assassin, but then she used her father's uh, pen particles to escape and became, um, you know, the next wasp. So I think this is a good pick. It's hard to find in, in high grade and I don't really see that many copies out. And thank you to Mr. Longshort for getting me on this book. <laughs> good stuff, Richie. I'd, I'd say one other thing why I think this book is important and, and Richie alluded to it originally he said this is her second appearance or her first cover. She showed up in a free comic day book, Civil War II, and I would say that the reason that why I think a lot of collectors are attracted to this book is that, frankly, a lot of these free comic day books, particularly many of the major Marvel ones that get printed through the roof, don't have a lot of collectability. Um, so, so this is, by definition, not her first appearance, but it's her first appearance in a book you had to buy, um, for whatever that for whatever that's worth. So um, th this is an important important book for her and, and, and given that that civil war two book can be had for for next to nothing you know this is really the play i'd also say that even the cover a of this book is worth grabbing if you see it uh she's she's right on the cover as well this one in 50 uh on a fifty thousand ish print run means that this book is pretty scarce um and definitely worth grabbing if, if you come across this one but uh richie great great addition to the list this week thank you for joining us for the uh for the prospect list uh, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss any of our great content from the channel uh thank you for all everyone for helping us get to the 5,000 subscriber goal i uh, you know it's been quite a journey on that so everyone's pretty stoked about that and uh we'll catch you on the flip side So She-Hulk books are on fire right now. Certain controversial or revealing covers are selling for large sums. Uh, She-Hulk had a significant presence in the Fantastic Four. The issue features the first appearance of TJ Vance. Sorry. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> it, it's me. <laughs> my dog, my dog I is my, I think my dog is trying to sign on to my computer. Hold on, hey, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron yeah. somebody's dog's barking. I don't think you can edit yeah, that. Can, can, <laughs> can you mute, hey. Aaron, can you mute yourself, Aaron? Yeah, let, let me... Right. All right, hold on. Let me go take care of him real quick, and then I'll get right back to reading this paragraph. This is totally unprofessional. <laughs> you know? My dog started barking at his dog. God damn it, Aaron! <laughs>